Mr. Speaker, uh, let me thank the minister for the for to do for the clarifications as well as uh, for <coughs> clearing the air on this issue. In fact, many of us have uh, received feedback from our residents that are uh, giving comments that every time the government increased subsidy, the childcare operator will increase their fees. You know, it seems to be corresponding. But I think I thank the Minister for producing the, the data as well as the statistics. That's really important. It is still quite tough for middle-income families, uh, which have uh, a, few, a few children in childcare, especially the, even with the subsidy itself, they may, not be, they may find it tough for, for, for their monthly income. The other group that I'm a little bit concerned with is uh, for the non-working mothers. I think there are, I understand there's already additional uh, subsidy for non-working mothers if they fulfill the criteria. You know, my take is that currently now, how many of these children are belong, uh, who enjoy subsidies are belonging to the non-working mothers? Can we equalise both groups instead of making them apply you know, to this criteria? If you were to put working mothers or non-working mothers aside, how much more increase in terms of subsidies would the government have to bear? You know, rather to, to make the working mothers go and, uh, non-working mothers go and apply for additional subsidy. Thanks. I thank the member for his questions. Every year, some preschool operators will make some adjustments to their fees. There are many, many operators, private, not-for-profit, uh, as well as uh, MOE kindergartens. Uh, so every year, there will be some adjustments, whether or not we make adjustments to our subsidies. So that, uh, I hope that clears the misunderstanding. And in fact, the vast majority of households earning 12,000 and below ought to see reduction in childcare fees. There are, of course, some centres, private operators, that charge, say, thousands of dollars in fees and make adjustments in the hundreds of dollars. That is quite a different uh, situation altogether. But for the vast, vast majority, they should see uh, a fall in childcare fees from January next year. And as I said, from January 2021, for partner operators, we will bring down the fee caps uh, even further, and thereafter, the anchor operators will see a fall as well. Uh, so that is on your first question. The second point is on families with many children. And so apart from looking at total household income, we also uh, look at, for families with many dependents and more children in preschool, we will look at it from a per capita basis so that they can get even more support. Uh, on non-working mothers, uh, the support uh, provided to them takes into account the fact that because they're working, they will need a full day childcare. And by working mother, we're talking about working two days a week. Uh, and that can include the informal sector as well. So there is a degree of flexibility. And in fact, working mother status is conferred if a mother works for two days a week or 50, roughly 56 hours a month. Uh, we do uh, grant special approval if mothers have uh, uh, caregiving needs for children younger than 24 months or if they're looking after uh, other dependents. Uh, for those who are looking for employment, uh, we make concessions for them and allow them to benefit from the full subsidy. And for those who are non-working mothers, uh, what they can do is uh, they can go for the basic subsidy for full, for the full day childcare or if not and they are at home with no other uh, caregiving responsibilities other, for their, other than their uh, young children, then there is the option to go for kindergarten with KIFA subsidies. So that half day they get the pedagogical support, the other half day time with the parents, time with family, family bonding time. 